In this video lecture, we're going to talk about fin performance and arrays of fins. In our last lecture, we talked about the fin equation and the thin fin approximation. So we're going to take that a little bit further and figure out uh, how do you analyze the performance of a fin and then arrays of fins. So the first performance parameter is called the fin effectiveness, and that is basically the ratio of the fin heat transfer rate to the heat transfer rate that would exist without the fin. So you can see in the drawing here, here is our fin. So we would quantify how much heat does that fin dissipate. That would go here in our numerator with Q sub F. So we could take how much heat that fin dissipates and divide it by how much that same exposed area of the base would have dissipated if the fin were not there. So if we were to remove the fin, how much area would that little spot under the fin, um, how much heat would that area dissipate? So that can be written, this is just another form of Newton's law, where we have H times area times the surface temperature, in this case this would be the base temperature, minus T infinity. So that's what all that, that theta means. And then A, uh, C comma B means the cross-sectional area of the exposed base. So in order, if you recall from the last video lecture, because this fin is changing temperature as you go, calculating its total heat transfer rate is not trivial because it gives off a different, a different flux at each point because its temperature is always changing. So we can, if it's a fin of uniform cross-sectional cross area, we can look at table 3.4 from the book. And depending on our tip condition, we can calculate QF using one of these equations. And typically, if it's a long, skinny fin, these answers, although they look quite different mathematically, end up being uh, fairly similar. So sometimes you can make approximations or take your best guess and end up with a decent solution. So our next performance parameter is called the fin efficiency. The fin efficiency is the actual fin heat transfer rate, QF, divided by the maximum possible heat transfer rate that the fin could have. So again, we see QF as calculated from the table for the fin, divided by Q max. And what Q max says is, if our entire fin were at the same temperature as the base, then you would have this maximum driving force all the way through the length of the fin. So because you'd have that high delta T from the base all the way to the tip, that would be the best you could possibly do for a given H. So this uh, fin efficiency is how well are you doing versus how well you could possibly do. So to achieve something like this, you could have a solid that has really, really, really high uh, thermal conductivity. So you'd see a heat would propagate through there very quickly, giving you something fairly uniform. So the fin efficiency is what's happening here divided by what's happening here. And again, in each, well, in this scenario, we're considering just the surface area of the fins themselves. So this fin effectiveness is tends to be a number greater than one because one that area of the exposed base if you um, dramatically multiply the surface area well then you're definitely going to do better than that so the fin effectiveness tends to be a number greater than one whereas fin efficiency is a number between zero and one uh, because you're judging how much heat is being dissipated relative to the best that you could possibly do Okay, so now let's look at arrays of fins. Remember the purpose of a fin is to increase surface area, so you increase your total heat transfer rate and therefore decrease the total thermal resistance from that surface. So you'd wanna have, you wouldn't wanna limit yourself to just a single fin, you'd wanna have a whole array of fins. So here is an ar array of fins, which is obviously gonna dissipate much more heat. So the first parameter for an array is the array effectiveness, which is similar to the fin effectiveness. So the array effectiveness is the ratio of the array heat transfer rate to the rate that would, would exist without the array. So in this case, we use this parameter Q sub T, which is the total heat transfer rate over the whole array. So the way to calculate that is you would take each individual fin and you would calculate Q sub F. So you'd have N times Q sub F, but then you would also have H times 
the area of the exposed base times uh, theta b. So basically what we're doing is we're taking all the heat transfer rate from here, but we're also considering the heat transfer rate from the area of the exposed base. So we'd get q total by considering all the heat that's dissipated over that entire array. Then this is relative to the area of the entire exposed base. So that's here represented by the black. So if you had no fins at all, your surface would dissipate heat just by simple Newton's law of cooling, HA times delta T, where that delta T is your base temperature minus your ambient temperature. So again, this is going to be a number greater than one because the total amount of heat you dissipate through your entire array is definitely going to be more than you could dissipate without the array at all. Okay, then finally we have the array efficiency. So the array efficiency is the total heat rate from the surface, uh, A sub T, associated with both the fins and the exposed portion of the base. So again, we're using that QT, which considers the fins and the exposed base. And now that is relative to the entire um, array as if it were all at the base temperature. So the maximum amount of heat you could possibly dissipate with this array would be if you had perfectly conducting fins and you were able to get these fins somehow all at the base temperature. So the best you could possibly do now considers the total surface area of the exposed base and the total of all the fins multiplied by theta b, where again theta b is still the base temperature minus t infinity. So this because this is a ratio of how well you're doing relative to how well you can possibly do, this number is going to be between 0 and 1, just like the fin efficiency. So these are just some ways to uh, characterize the performance of a single fin or an entire array of fins.